Hello, I'm Professor Peraza, and today's lecture video covers research. These are the specific learning objectives for this module. After this lecture, you will be able to outline the steps involved in the scientific method, locate credible and reliable sources of information, and identify different types of stud research studies and designs. This module also meets the following course learning objectives. Research sets the foundation for nutrition, and it's important that discoveries are subject to challenge and change. The scientific method is a testing procedure designed to uncover facts and detect and eliminate error. It is an organized way to think about and solve problems based on data. The steps in the scientific method include making an observation, asking a question, generating a hypothesis or testable explanation, making a prediction based on that hypothesis, and then testing that prediction through research experimentation. A good design takes into account what has been done previously. Thus, before beginning a new study, the researchers undertake a thorough review of published research in order to ensure that their work advances the field. After the experiment has been com completed, researchers would then analyze the data to see if their findings support or refute the hypothesis. Follow-up experiments that are conducted confirm or extend the findings. Here is a really basic example of the connection between an observation, question, and a hypothesis. Let's say you pour yourself a cup of coffee and after some time it's cold. You observe that after 20 minutes of sitting out, your coffee is cold. You then ask a question. If I put my coffee in the microwave for two minutes, will it be hot? Your hypothesis or educated guess is microwaving my coffee for two minutes will cause it to be hot. Then you can move forward with testing your hypothesis with the experiment of microwaving your coffee to see if the two minutes caused your coffee to be hot. Let's talk about human and animal experiments. In many cases, animal models are used when scientists cannot test on humans, and this could be unethical. Rats and mice are the most common animals used in nutrition research. An advantage of animal dietary studies is that researchers can control exactly what the animals eat. There are limitations of animal research. First, an animal's metabolism and physiology are different from humans. Animal research is considered preliminary and shouldn't be considered relevant to real life decisions about how people eat. Before a research study can be conducted with humans, researchers must obtain approval from a research review board. The research review board only approves studies that have a valid experimental protocol, are expected to produce important knowledge, and treat study participants fairly and ethically. They also assess the potential treatments, risks, and benefits to the participants. Researchers must also obtain informed consent from the participants. Informed consent includes information about the study's purpose, procedures, known risks, and benefits. It is voluntary documented confirmation. If there's no animal module model available, then scientific knowledge cannot advance beyond what can be learned from epidemiological studies. One major issue with animal models is that most human chronic diseases do not occur in animals. Epidemiology. This is the branch of science that looks at all the factors that determine the presence or absence of a disease or disorder. Epidemiology is the study of disease in populations, and this includes both experimental and observational research. Experimental studies like randomized clinical trials differ greatly from observational in the way that they are conducted and the strengths of conclusions. There are some key terms that you will see when looking at research. Incidence, which is the number of new cases of a disease or disorder in a population over a period of time. Prevalence, prevalence is the number of existing cases of a disease in a population at a given time. Burden of disease, which is the total significance of disease for society beyond the immediate cost of treatment. It is measured in years of life lost due to ill health or the difference between total life expectancy and disability adjusted life expectancy. Lastly, the cost of illness, which includes not only the actual money spent, but also work-related costs, educational costs, and the amount the individual would pay to avoid health risks. Let's review the different types of studies. The first is the meta-analysis, which is a statistical process that combines the findings from many different studies. 
A systematic review is a critical assessment and evaluation of research studies that address a particular clinical issue. The systematic review may also include a quantitative pooling of data called a meta-analysis. Since systematic reviews combine the results of many studies, they help researchers produce more reliable findings. A meta-analysis is a type of systematic review that goes one step further, combining the data from multiple studies and using statistics to summarize it. Systematic reviews and meta-analyses are considered the best quality evidence about a research question because by combining the findings of many studies, they reduce the risk of bias and generate more reliable results. You can find systematic reviews in the Evidence Analysis Library, USDA Nutrition Evidence Library, and the Cochrane Collaboration. Randomized control trials are sometimes called consider the gold standard with research as they can provide results that determine cause and effect relationship. They start with a research question, intervention, and a control group. With randomized trials, participants are randomly assigned to two or more groups. Typically, if two groups, one would get a treatment or a protocol and then the other a placebo. Observational studies do not give participants a treatment or intervention Instead, they look at what they're already doing and how, see how it relates to their health. These types of study designs can only identify correlations or relationships between nutrition and health. They can't show that one factor causes another. Observational studies have the advantage of allowing researchers to study large groups of people in the real world, looking at the frequency and pattern of health outcomes and identifying factors that correlate with them. For cohort studies, this is where a group of people are observed frequently over a period of time to determine how often a certain disease would occur. Cohort studies can have a prospective, forward-looking design or retrospective, backward-looking design. Prospective cohort studies, which enroll a cohort and follow them into the future, are usually considered the strongest type of observational study design. Retrospective studies look at what happened in the past and they're considered weaker because they rely on people's memory of what they ate or how they felt in the past. With retrospective studies, the result, like lung cancer, has already occurred and the researchers would look at the individual's history to find risk factors. Case control studies compare people who have a certain medical condition with people who do not have the medical condition, but are otherwise as similar as possible, for example, in terms of their sex and age. Then the two groups are interviewed, or medical files analyzed, to find anything that might be risk factors for the disease. Because the researchers usually ask about past events, they are dependent upon the participants' memories. Case control studies are generally retrospective as they begin with the outcome and do not follow people over time. An example, researchers might compare a group of people with cardiovascular disease with a group of healthy controls to see whether there were more controls or cases that followed a Mediterranean diet. Cross-sectional studies involve collecting information on patients with an outcome of interest. There is no control group, and the data is collected at a single point in time or time interval, so exposure and outcome are determined simultaneously. The classic type of cross-sectional study is the survey. Because this data is collected only once, cross-sectional studies are relatively quick and inexpensive. An example of a cross-sectional study could be answering a question like, how many people had their annual physical? A case report or case series is a report done on one patient or a series of patients with an outcome of interest. There is no control group involved. A case report can be seen as the lowest level of evidence, however, they can also be the first line of evidence where ideas emerge that fuel future research. Qualitative studies are based on collecting information by talking to people with a medical condition and understanding what it's like to live with a certain disease. Lastly, practice guidelines, which would be a statement produced by a panel of experts that outlines current best practices to inform healthcare professionals and patients in making clinical decisions. Practice guidelines are also known as evidence-based guidelines and clinical guidelines. For this next activity, you'll want to follow the link for each article and determine the study design. Let's review some research terms. Credibility is defined as the quality or power of inspiring belief. 
Credible sources, therefore, must be reliable sources that provide information that one can believe to be true. Reliability refers to whether or not you get the same answer by using an instrument to measure something more than once. Research reliability is the degree to which a research method produces stable and consistent results. Validity refers to the accurateness as the re of the research as a whole and the accuracy of each step independently. In order for research to be valid, it should follow the scientific method. While reliability is concerned with the accuracy of the actual measuring instrument or procedure, validity is concerned with the study's success at measuring what the researchers set out to measure. According to the Journal of the International Federation of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine, peer review is defined as a process of subjecting an author's scholarly work, research, or ideas to the scrutiny of others who are experts in the same field. Peer review acts as a filter to ensure that only high-quality research is being published by determining the validity, significance, and originality of the study. A peer-reviewed journal is one that publishes researcher, research only after researchers who are not part of the study agree that the study was carefully designed and executed and the results are presented in an unbiased, objective manner. Thus, the research has been approved by peers of the research team. This generally happens before research results are published in scientific journals. Peer review helps ensure that researchers are objective as possible. Some examples of peer-reviewed journals include the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, New England Journal of Medicine, and Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Some examples of databases that contain peer-reviewed articles include PubMed, which is provided by the National Library of Medicine, Science Direct, Cochrane Library, and Academic Search Premier or EBSCOhost. The college's library database is also a great place to start for locating peer-reviewed journal articles. Once you log in, you'll come to a screen where you can refine your search results. Under the Limit Your Results section, you could see a box that you could check titled Scholarly Peer Review Journals. If you click this before starting your search, you will narrow down the articles to only ones that are peer reviewed. Let's cover how to review a research article. The first thing you will see within a journal article is the abstract. This provides a brief overview of the article and helps us to determine whether we should read the entire article or not. Next is the introduction, which provides background information and a statement of the research hypothesis. The purpose of the introduction is to provide the rationale for conducting the study. Next is the method section, which includes details of how the study was conducted, procedures followed, instruments used, and variables measured information about the number of subjects included in the study and their categorization, sampling methods, the inclusion criteria, who can be in, and the exclusion criteria, who cannot be in, and the variables chosen are specified. After that is the results section, which is essentially all the data of the study along with figures, tables, and or graphs. Next is the discussion section, which is where the results are interpreted. Usually this is where the study results will be compared with other studies. Lastly is the references slash bibliography, which is where you will see citations of sources from where the information was obtained. For this next activity, I want you to review the article, Association of Physical Activity Trajectories with Major Cardiovascular Diseases in Elderly People. In reviewing this article, consider the type of study design, pros and cons for that, sample size and if small or not, length of the study if too short, research limitations or weaknesses, and any other observations. For your research assignment, you will need to locate credible information. This can be done in a few ways. One way would be to utilize the Bucks Library Database. Make sure to click Full Text, and you can also click Peer Reviewed. Academic Search Premier, or EBSCOhost, covers all subjects and many types of resources with both scholarly and non-scholarly articles. This can be a good place to start looking for research. Something to keep in mind is that you may not be able to find the information you need via the Bucks Library. In this case, you will need to use Google. One way to search for research is by typing in the search bar your topic area and then the word research. You can use this lecture and the textbook to help you narrow down the search results. Credible websites are going to be useful not only for this course, but also in whatever line of work you end up in. Here are things to consider when evaluating the website you are looking at. Use your own critical thinking skills to analyze the content on the website. 
A credible website would have a clear author and or agency, like the American Heart Association, producing the article. Reliable URLs are generally .gov or .edu sites. Looking at the currency of the website would also be key. If any research or studies are mentioned, there should be citations or links to those. How well written the article is would also be key. Is the information free of grammatical, spelling, and or typographical errors? Lastly, there should be a balanced point of view versus bias. We're going to review some red flags that can indicate poor nutrition advice or fad diets that might not be sustainable. Diets and remedies that are not supported by credible evidence can damage health and delay treatment that could preserve health. When looking at information online or advertisements for new programs, consider these points. One red flag for a fad diet is the promise of a quick fix. Ask yourself, does this diet or product seem too good to be true? Does it promise results within a short time frame like one week? If a program is promising quick and extreme weight loss, it's likely not sustainable long term. Quick weight loss can also just be water weight, which means the weight can come back on quickly. Also, quick losses could indicate someone is consuming too low of a calorie intake, which could also increase the risk of micronutrient deficiencies. One important thing to question is if a diet or program is eliminating whole food groups or nutrients. Ask yourself, are there inconsistencies to claims made as compared to basic principles of nutrition as outlined in this class? Another thing to consider would be if there are any nutrients of concern if someone were to follow this diet or program. Evidence-based research provides information about diseases, risk factors, and appropriate interventions. When looking at a diet or program, always take time to locate the research if any exists. If no studies have been done on that diet, supplement, or program, that is a huge red flag and can be a cause for concern, especially with safety long-term. Personal reviews of a diet or supplement are not considered credible. If research is available, you want to consider the following. If the sample size was small, if the study was short, and if there have been any possible conflicts of interest with who funded the research provided. Often you might see celebrities promoting a diet or supplement, and since they are a celebrity, their words can be powerful for consumers. It is not to say that if a celebrity promotes a diet that they, it is inherently an unhealthy diet to follow. However, again, you want to take a more critical look beyond the claims and headlines. Always ask yourself if that individual promoting the program has relevant scientific credentials or if they are just providing a personal review, which again, is not the same as credible research. For this last activity, I want you to type in fast weight loss tips in your search engine. Choose any website to review using the CRAP test. The CRAP test is a six letter mnemonic device for evaluating the credibility and reliability of information found through various sources, including websites, social media channels. Remember, you're gonna be looking at the currency, reliability, relevance, authority, accuracy, purpose, and process.